everybody, and welcome to Nerds Playing Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Da Silva. With me, as always, my co-host, Jose Romero. Happy Nerd Day! Woo-hoo. Happy Nerd Day, right Don't, my... The only good thing in Star Wars right now, right there. Marvel, uh, baby. And, uh, That's what it is. Marvel's where it's at. Don't 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 get crazy. Don't think. Don't try to reinvent the I wheel. I said it's the only good thing in Star Wars. I didn't say it was the best thing in Star Wars. Oh, okay. Uh, I was about to say, don't get crazy. Listen, in, in listen, listen. You you, uh, you uh, this this week Star Wars hit a second base line drive. That's all it is. It, it wasn't a home run, but it was a solid two base drive. That's you, you should be very happy. With we'll that. get to the Obi Wan in a minute. We'll, we'll jump into that. Obviously, that's gonna be. Yeah. Good stuff all about, but yes, okay. <sighs> There's better stuff than Obi Wan to talk about let for us, sure. Let us review this weekend geek <laughs> posing before we get into our meals. Let's get into little nuggets. Yeah, we, let's see what yeah, you got. We little nugget. We have one nugget actually. Uh, one nugget. That's an okay. interesting nugget. Uh, this is light week. It's very light nerd week. Maybe everyone's getting ready for Thor. Because a lot of stuff came out this week, so I think that's why. It's a lot well, of, stuff a lot of shows and out. stuff, obviously, and stuff shows going on. But as far as news, not a whole lot. But this one, huh? this is all interesting because. Right. Right. I am unfamiliar with the property, unlike yourself. Uh, you've talked about this, and that's Craven the Hunter. We know it's coming Craven out. Craven the Hunter. Sony's making the film. Uh, um, I rent, it was a, Ryan Taylor uh, Johnson. Johnson, right? He's kick ass himself. He's going to portray Craven. And they had right. an interview with him recently, and he talked about the project. And he said a couple of things. I've heard something about yeah, this. So, yeah, 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 he said a couple of things. And I, I guess, you know, the nerd community went up in the uproar for what he said, but I'll get to that in a second. But the first thing okay. he said, this, this is for me because I'm not sure. He mentioned, I guess, the project's going to depart from what the comics, comic books do. Again, that could be good or bad, right? I don't have a problem with that. I don't, I don't think either, either, as far as it's okay to change stuff up. I'm totally fine with that. Um, he mentioned something about Craven is just, and, and I don't know if this is how it is in the comics, but he's talking about he's just like a regular guy. He's got no powers, nothing like that. Is that true? I, I don't know if in that's the, the case. In the beginning, in the beginning, in the beginning, originally Craven was just a really good me- hunter that was human he was he he was trained in tracking and he was almost borderline superhuman in terms of his senses like he can pick up a smell of like an animal he could like smell like their scents or like their pheromones vaguely not like a thousand miles away but like close enough it was fresh enough he could pick up certain things notice a certain way branches were breaking or little hairs and things that could uh, other people might overlook and he was such a good hunter then he decided he wanted to hunt the most dangerous prey, the most dangerous prey being man, but man is too easy. He needed the a, like a, a man of animals, a Spider-Man that was the man he went to hunt in New York. And then Spider-Man thoroughly embarrassed him and wiped the floor at him because he was just a dude. He's just a dude. Okay, so that's, so that's, not, that's not a big deal. I wasn't like, sure that, like, I, that was a big deal. Now. Like, I, I in, in terms of physicality, like a Batman. Like okay. Physically, Which is fine. like cool. a, yeah, yeah. no, no bat armor, not right. Uh, or not, he wears not, that. Not, uh, not Batman, right? Lion just thing, like, whatever he wears. Right, right. right. Okay. That, that's fine. I guess I, I didn't have a problem with that. I just wasn't sure if that was something that the comics followed. But this is the interesting part. This is the part that I'm on. He eventually got like enhanced strengths and power okay. that he died and he came back to life. And oh, but that's like, like yeah, really strong. Yeah, okay. But that's later on. Right. right. I doubt the movie is going that direction, at least anytime soon. Uh, but this is the part that caught my attention, a lot of people's okay. attention, and I want to get your thoughts on that. So, you know, he kept talking about it, and he says, quote, um, talking about Craven, that he's an animal lover. And That's not true. He's an animal hunter. Well, this is what this is words. He's he's now an animal lover. Oh, this lover. is where it's different. Yeah, oh, right, right. right. He's, right. Yeah, okay. yeah. This gotcha. is what this is. This is this word about gotcha. the character, how it's going to be portrayed in the film. He's sure. an animal sure. lover and protector of the natural world. Now, okay, so an animal oh. lover. He is a hunter. I mean, what am I missing here? You're you're, you're, you know, you're missing the hunting part. You're missing right, the right. I like, mean, okay. Like here, here's the thing. Remember the, the craven. Weird. The craven costume is literally like the face of a the lion, lion, right? Because I mean, he's, uh, he murdered the lion with his bare hands. With his bare hands, he murdered a lion. So, like, like maybe maybe what you're trying to do is sort of like Craven the Hunter from the '90s Spider-Man cartoon because you couldn't kill anything. So like he like would just like capture an animal and then send him to like a zoo but he'd brag about it like i did it all by myself so maybe that's that what they're going the for like own, 90s no. <laughs> craven 90s spider-man craven maybe that's it maybe it's because it's like i don't know it's like uh... but didn't it be more craven the capture right, right. that would be that, i mean i guess he's thinking still hunting it's just it just sounds odd like it's just a contradiction like okay yeah it's like Sam, yeah. Uh, vegetarian but i'm having chicken for dinner tonight i mean it, like, it doesn't in, make sense in the 
in the OG comic books, Craven literally was like one of those dudes who had like the plaques with all the animal heads in his like trophy room. That's OG comic. Right. That, so that's what he is. I mean, he's a hunter. I mean, he's a villain, so he's supposed to be a douchebag. So how do you make a dude a douchebag? Just the kind of guy who hunts for the fun. I mean, he. Right. Big trained himself prey, to whatever. be that amazing but he's still just killing animals to go oh, I need that's what game. i'm saying he's that's what he does so, 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 and he's and russian me. and he's russian so automatically problem it's odd. i mean that really not that i had a whole lot of excitement after seeing morbius but this really lessens the excitement even more from sony that's a weird choice to make i i don't get that i i guess i don't read the comics so i don't know but again it's odd. I don't know. Maybe hunt animals that are bad. I don't know. I don't know what the. So I don't should, know where they're should, going with this. We, you know, it's weird. Should Should we start going? It's Craven time. Like we, right we now, may like have to. Right. I'll, yeah. I'll say this. Unless actually, there's only way I can see. I just thought of this. He was who we think Craven the Hunter is, and something happened. Now he's kind of changed to and now he's an animal or whatever. Maybe I guess. Maybe I guess. Maybe. He's got his teeth cunning animals, and then. I don't know, whatever. He is the toughest dude in Peter. Uh, it's, that's it's, where he's maybe, that yeah, kind as of... I'm saying, I, 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 it's odd. I mean, or this is a way to making this a villain the anti-hero. I, I don't know. It's weird. It's just an odd direction to take. I'm like, okay. A lot of fans are like, it's just... Like a real edgy Greenpeace guy. <laughs> that's what they're saying, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's like, what we're going with this movie, I don't know. And... I, don't, I guess we'll know more once the villains announced. We, we don't know, have any idea what, as far as that goes. Or the rest of the cast. This is the problem, man. Is it's that odd. is that Sony bought Spider Man and they realized Spider Man only comes with Spider Man is the hero and everyone else is a villain, which right. is great. Sure. But they're like, we want to make our own universe now. So now you're taking dudes and trying to make them anti heroes. And listen, you caught a break with Venom. Venom yes. went from being a villain to literally the lethal protector. It was yeah, incontinent. It, it, it all was fun sense. and kind of zane, and it worked, right? And, and Morbius, Morbius is kind of an anti-hero too. Right. If they, if they would have done <laughs> it right, if they would, because it, they, it, I'll just be honest, Morbius could have been a fun movie, yeah, not a game changer. Yeah. Could have been fun. Absolutely. Yes. Cravens major contribution to comic book history is Craven's Last Hunt, where he goes so crazy, he shoots Spider-Man with a trank dart, buries him alive, dresses up as Spider-Man, makes him think that he's Spider-Man. Like, he literally is in a room where he just pumps spiders into the room and just smashes his hands and eating it. Like, he's going crazy. And when Spider-Man finally digs himself out to hunt Craven and go, you son of a, you killed me, you buried me alive. Craven is like, oh, you beat me. And he takes out a gun and kills himself. That's Craven's last hunt. That's his claim to fame is a psycho suicide story. So when I heard Jeremy doing it, it was an anti-hero. I was like, really? How is this going to happen? And what you do is you just make believe that the character is not the character. You should like, don't don't call it Craven then. Just do something else. You don't have to call it Craven. Right. You can, can do we, something whatever. else entirely. I just create a new create a new character based off Craven and let it go. I mean, I, it's just I mean. Look, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. When I when I heard this, um, I in the early two thousands when Joe Casada first became editor in chief of Marvel, like he saved them from bankruptcy. Okay, okay. him and Kevin Feige and uh, Avi uh, uh, Avi Irod saved Marvel from from uh, from bankruptcy. Um, Craven. The hunter, as we know him, has was died, and they introduced a second Craven that was his son, and he was that, yeah. less an evil asshole and more of a self-centered douche. And they had a reality TV show, and they had this twelve issue miniseries called Get Craven, so like Get Shorty, oh. and it was like how like he got involved in this whole like he was just trying to do a reality TV show, but he got involved with a lot of bad actors who like had a lot of bad money connected to bad people and everyone's mad at him because they were costing him money and it became a whole thing it was like an action comedy book and at, for a second i was like are doing are they doing get craven because that would be really interesting and a fun way to kind of break down like media and entertainment and reality tv and the like it could have been fun and instead they're giving us something else that just happens to call craven the hunter yeah, which yeah, is not yeah, craven hunter. Yeah, what a... interesting and, and, i mean and, listen i and as a flip side, as a flip side to this, Marvel, there's a rumor that Marvel's doing a Wonder Man TV series uh, based on Simon Williams. And Simon Williams came to fame as he's an, he was an actor, stuntman, and Avenger. And they're saying that that series is going to be sort of like, uh, almost like a like a Ricky Gervais version of Extras, sort of like, uh, the, or like a Larry Sanders show where you're kind oh, of making right, fun right. of the entertainment industry. 
but with a guy who happens to be a, a real superhero, I think that if they would have done the Get Craven, you could have had something very parallel thinking with what they want to do with Wonder Man on Disney Plus, and you could be like, oh, cool, this is something that it, both of them are are in that sort of meta textual referencing of the industry, but two different things. You could have had fun, two different kinds of fun: super powered fun, regular dude fun, and it would have been great. And now they're making him. Uh, the 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 edgiest vegetarian in the world, and I'm I'm, I'm sorry, like I, I don't I, I it, it doesn't sound off the jump when you have to recontextualize a character into something he's not, then don't call the thing that. Just make it another yeah, thing. It's... We don't need. Thank you, Sony. Uh, so listen, I, I'm I'll sure they're going because maybe you know we're killing enough. Maybe it's a great idea to have. I'm I sure know. Sony's gonna get gonna make a killing on the on on the streaming deals because they're great at business no, no, but, they're, 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 not, no question about that but this is yeah this is not this is not this is gonna this be not sound hot, good at all I, yeah, I, it's, it's, it's already good. got one foot in the grave really that's does. how i feel like I, it. yeah i hope I, listen i can't dig yourself out don't get me wrong we haven't seen, sure we haven't seen there's always yet, a potential maybe, you know this is all we know maybe there's a lot more behind the scenes that we have no idea about which is maybe probably the case maybe maybe uh that being said <sighs> what do I, yeah, let, let's go here let's just get this out of the way let, all right let, let's rip the band-aid if you will. Sure. Obi-Wan, finally. Thank God the show's over. I really am glad the show's Episode over. Episode the, six, six. The finale. Return of the Jedi. Literally. Um, <laughs> I, yeah, God. And, I mean, episode six should have been called Return of the Jedi. Probably. That's exactly what this was. And, and I, I'll, I'll say this first. I'm going to just get this, get this off my chest. Because I was thinking about the show. Right? I was all in there, whatever. I'm like, okay, fine. And, and I didn't hate the finale. It wasn't that terrible. It was, it was fine. It was a mixed bag of good stuff. Not as good as some people make it out to be at all. Because I heard people, oh my God, it's the greatest fight ever. Calm the fuck down. Relax. It's, Relax. I'll put it this way. In my opinion, humbly, I'm, I'm going to be super optimistic on this one, right? Episode six was the second best episode of the whole series. Episode one being the first. Yeah, that, that's a fair statement. It doesn't, the bar's low, but yes, I agree that's with that. Issue. I will agree with that. But this is my issue. So I'm watching this show. Okay, so over... And I kept thinking, what a pointless show this was. Not 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 to say it's bad or good. It was just pointless, right? Didn't add anything new to the lore, Star Wars. Not we didn't learn anything new. And then I'm thinking, okay, so at the end of Revenge of the Sith, Obi Wan Kenobi, right? He fights Anakin, wins, goes, recluses himself in Tatooine, watching over Luke, and gonna go train with with Qui Gon. Fair enough. Here comes the show. At the end of the show, big fight with Darth Vader and Anakin Skywalker goes back to recluse on Tatooine and trains with Qui Gon. Nothing changed. It's the exact same thing. It's just like, what was the point in all of this? It just and I'm like, okay, th- and this is exactly the biggest problem with the show. Here's remember, we, I think we talked about this last episode where I said. Obi Wan more and more feels like it was a two hour movie that yes. they stretched to six exactly. because. The point of the episode, the point of this series should have been Obi Wan is he disconnected himself from the force because he feels guilty that he failed Anakin. Right. But he's still feeling the obligational responsibility of looking over Luke. Luke, he's not even that interested. He's like, I'm just doing this because I'm I'm supposed to. Right. I think it's right, but I don't feel like it's right anymore. And this quest that he goes on to makes him realize that Anakin is a lot, Anakin survived and that's who Darth Vader is. Mm-hmm. And then while confronting Vader, Vader basically tells him, you didn't kill Anakin, I did. That was a good line, by the way. That was a to, great to line. Fair, that moment yes, was, that was really fantastic, cool. which yeah, credit, a, credit leads, into, leads into exactly what Alec Guinness going, he's more machine than man now. Right. You're, and like, Darth Vader killed your father. Mm-hmm. Like all that is technically true. Right, right. That was based on the certain point of view now given to him at the end of episode six. Yeah. So to have Obi-Wan sort of like reclaim his connection to the force, understand that he's not the the reason everything went wrong, losing that guilt and being able to finally move forward with his training the way he's supposed to, that would have been a great two hour and 15 minute movie. Absolutely. Absolutely. It would have been great two hour and 15 minute movie. It is a mediocre six episode series, and mediocre is being uh, at best mediocre. Now I'll, I'll leave it at that. But yes, and, 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 right. and, here's, and here's the thing: because when you watch that series, you can see parts of it that goes, "That was going to be in the movie. 
that was going to oh, be the movie. That was like you can pick out exactly yeah. what was going to be in the movie easy. Yeah, and, and, and the fl- fact and flesh out the things we talked about as far as because there's no emotion. If, there's no emotional impact at all, at all, particularly in the last. Because even watching the last fight, right, which was great, it was really cool, no doubt about it. It was, it was cool. It was, Amazing. you know what? No doubt. It was. I honestly, and I, 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 whenever I say this, I know certain people are like, oh, like I like Revenge of the Sith because, and honestly, I like the jumpy fight between Obi Wan and Vader. I thought well, that jumpy I thought fight that was, that, part, that was a better fight than this one, as far as I'm concerned, visually. The oh, way, oh, oh, yeah, I, far, I thought so by far. This and I, I had, this, it had more stakes, and, and that's what I think that's the one I'm looking for, right? This one, right. just felt like okay, we knew it was going to happen. We just wanted to see it. Let's get over with and let's put it on screen. It but cool. I will well say, done. I. I did enjoy. I did enjoy the fact that Obi Wan has now pushed himself to use the Force differently than he did prior. Right. Yes. Because he, because he lost the connection, he's not at that level he was anymore. So he. It's almost like. Did you ever read uh, the Dark Knight Returns, yeah. the graphic novel? Mm-hmm. When old Batman is starting to go back and fighting crime, there's parts where he's like he's surrounded by a bunch of people. He's like, I'm old. I'm slower than I was before. I can't waste my time fighting the guys. I have to be precise and right. take them out fast. Right. And I feel like that's what Obi-Wan is now. Like It's no longer like I'm going to just battle to keep up with his rage. Like, like, I have to be precise. I have to overwhelm him mentally and physically, and I have to stop him. And so it's no longer sort of like uh, a reach out or – showing that he can keep up or not or showing that he's more powerful he's now using the force very strategically to get the win yeah and i that evolution of jediism i thought was really cool that's to see. Cool see absolutely but but ultimately because again and there's a problem with prequels right not just this show any any kind of prequel show is like you know what's going to happen so the weight's not there you're fighting okay you know none, none of them's going to die right just kind of wait and see right. how they kind of maneuver out of the situation and that's it it felt to me like like when I was in Civil War with the big airport scene, right? And I got a lot of shit for this, but which is a fun scene. Great. Cool, no doubt. I like awesome. I like watching it, but ultimately it, it, it's pointless and it's got no weight to it. It's like I'm watching an NBA All-Star game. All the cool tricks and up, up and down, but no one's playing defense. And any day, whoever wins, who gives a fuck? It doesn't matter. And this is what uh, some of these fights listen, matter for listen, the most part. War, War Machine was paralyzed. Yeah, so he there was, was fine. Way to he it. was fine. But ultimately, that, you could have taken that scene from them when we, when we wouldn't have changed, I thought. It would have been the same. It wouldn't have changed, but it's a great fucking scene. No, no, listen. <laughs> I, I enjoy great. watching it. Like I do watch yeah. like, I'll watch NBA. I'll start again. Oh, it's fun. But at the end of the day, it doesn't mean nothing. Probably not. But, but that's what I feel like. The weight's not the stakes. And this fight's like, okay, we know what's going to happen. We, okay, fine. I get it. Even Reba is chasing Luke. Yeah, she's not going to kill Luke. Obviously, yeah. I and mean, by the way, the, the, which was a the, terrible fucking scene, man. Yeah. Do you understand why she went after Luke? I, I was, tr- I, 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 know, and that's the point. I, I, and I was gonna get to that. I don't know. I guess I maybe trying to get revenge by kidding the son, but does Vader even or, know about this? She was this? trying to hurt. Maybe she's trying to hurt Obi Wan because. Well, I thought, oh, I thought like, now she's all into. I, I said, that's weird. It just didn't make sense. And how she found him, whatever. Fine, that's a whole different story for a different day, but. I actually know she was, he was there. All Organa said is like the kid's alive. He knew the, the uh, kid's alive, but that's it. And how she right. put two and two because he was in Tatooine. Whatever. All that being I said. Don't... But why is he going after? I, I didn't understand that at all. And I thought, and that's the, again, problem with the show. They could have taken her storyline, focused more on Obi Wan, make it up to our film, right? And you could have done another, another show, which would have been a pretty cool show with the Inquisitors and her being the one going through this journey right and they ultimately like, get yeah. that redemption she didn't get the redemption here like she kind of um, imagine imagine her story but it was the acolyte with that show that's coming out that's about, right. supposed to be about that, the dark side that would have been an that would have been a really great journey yeah, of yeah, an acolyte could have spent the that right time great. building it up the way you should have not, not half-assing it like did in the show and it took and away she, from only one and, and and say what you will about about like the her uh, her character in the story Moses Ingram that chick is giving 110 percent in every scene that she's, she's not she's doing the best Andy. she can with what she's given I, I don't fault that's what I'm saying her. it's not her fault it, listen it, the character is not written very well and they could have really again an, an own show fleshing that out would have been really interesting would have been what, so what she much went better. through and now she's, uh-huh. she's she's almost like a Vader right she's killing kids and all that stuff and then she kind of gets a redeeming arc he really really get that kind of but not really it just didn't work, and why? And then they kept interrupting the cool fight scene with that. Oh god, it was an, it was that part. I hated yeah. that part. I love the yeah. fight with the Obi Wan, all that cool shit. Great, no problem. And I, I like the scene, the, the which is kind of um, the parallel of the rebel scene when the 
Ahsoka. Oh, yeah, yeah. when you cut that mask right, open. Yeah, that, that, that was kind of cool. Yeah, that was like inside. Like, that's a, that's very inside know, baseball. Who, um, in, cool. in continuity, who did it first? Was it Ahsoka or was it Obi-Wan? Because oh. if it was... If it was, if it was, if it was, if it was Ahsoka first, it was Obi-Wan. Vader must have been like, my apprentice and my master keep punking me out. And, and it, it kind of sucks because uh, Vader's, I mean, as uh, he's a badass, but he always gets his ass kicked. I don't know. Uh, it's just, he doesn't always get his ass kicked. I know, Usually, I know, he's, he's only kicking asses, but there are some I know, people yeah. Look, who are able to ben, step ben up. Ben Kenobi is no doubt. He's, as far as Jedi, the GOAT, right? Yes, he's taken down absolutely. all of them. He's... The Grievous, Vader's on multiple occasions. Uh, Yoda, uh, Mace, and Obi Wan are, are, are the G's. But he's They're fought the G's. everybody. He just, God, he's taken down. He helped take down uh, the, the stupid guy's name, the old guy. Uh, uh, Doku. Uh, Doku. Uh, he didn't take him down by himself. It was really more Anakin, but right. still. But he's involved in all these fights. Darth Maul. He killed Darth Maul. He's killed the big guns, right? Twice, twice, twice. twice. He killed them both twice. I mean, he's a he's a badass. So and and this not, and like I love that it was a cool scene. I don't know people complain that he got his powers too soon. I don't care, whatever. But we threw all the rocks. Too soon. It's been six episodes. Uh, I know. What are you well, talking? My, my, I, I would say if they didn't build it up, I would agree with that statement, right? I, I'm fine with it. It's sort of maybe again, this is what happens. We don't focus on Obi Wan, right? You take away from what the story could have been. But he's throwing the rocks. That shit. That shit was cool. That shit was cool. Yeah, no, it was. No it was really cool. You know, it ended the way it ended. Fine, Qui Gon showed up. Okay, whatever. Listen, decent episode. It was. It had his issues. But but it's right. It, it, I did, it, it didn't save one, the show. I put it that way. It didn't save the show. I give. You know. I give episode one. I give it like a like a seven point five. Episode one. Episode. Yes. Episode six. <laughs> I give like a seven point three. Yeah, I'll say seven and a half. I'll go set just to make it even. But yeah, but like I said, it's not as good as episode one. But it's not as good as episode one. But, but it's it's the yeah. best one. And the has, episode five. Really cool is, episode five is the third best episode. But once again, it's it's with the problem where this episodes aren't great, but there are great moments inside the episode. Which is what I'm saying again. Two hours. Two, you would have picked two and a half hours, and man, it could have been a really cool movie. Do, do you could have done two fifteen? I yeah, I, of I, I I. I I'm still challenging people. Whoever does editing, have someone get all six episodes and condense it down to a two-hour, fifteen-minute movie. And I guarantee people, like, man, this I, is a great. I'm not movie. sure there's enough in there where we have to. I think it may be better. I don't know if it's going to give us a complete film, but nonetheless, it'd be better. Um, like, with the way I think you could do a complete film with the footage you got. I think so. It's, it's a show still missing more. You would have to cut and, a and lot you need of more stuff character out. study on Obi Wan. We didn't get enough of that to really make those moments more impactful. Well, I I disagree. I feel like if you recontextualize, it's a, this is a problem, the, the, the magic of editing. You can recontextualize a lot of those scenes and really give yourself a journey of an Obi Wan. It was not enough Obi Wan. That's the problem. It was so much of all your other other character, and that's that's why that's why it's the issue. And you need to cut it down. A two hour and fifteen minute movie. That's why be because it's not enough. I'll be surprised. There's enough two hours of stuff out. I mean, you could cut a lot of shit out. Uh, but uh, overall, it's not a success. This is a, this is a better Boba Fett, of course. Sure. Because that was just not good, but not that much better, and it gives me no confidence in any aside from Mandalorian or any other Star Wars. Uh, you know, I, I, I am, I am, I am, I am actually a little optimistic about Andor. I'm a little optimistic about Andor because it has nothing to do with Jedi's and everything about a dude like in the beginnings of a rebellion. It's, so it's, it's very. Still, down to I mean, like I said, you know, it's, it's with prequels. Right? It's not again. Even Obi Wan, I said it would have been great. I saw they had the issue with it being a prequel. Same thing with Andor. It's a prequel, right? We we know where he's gonna end up. We know he ends up with this and Rogue One. We get it. It's like okay, so I mean, he's gonna die at the end, so. right? I mean, eventually we know that. We we know the story for the most part. How he begins. I mean, maybe it's cool. I'm, I, listen, I just right now I don't have any confidence. I'm hoping they change my mind. Yeah. I comp- walk into yeah. this, I was like, "We're gonna do this." Or we want, and, I, listen, and they let me were, down. I'm like, "I'm, I'm not." This was supposed this. to be. This was supposed to be your moon night. Yeah, this, I get it. This was the I one, it. and the, the rogue. This, I feel like, like you know, Charlie Brown there. The Lucy who takes the football away. <laughs> Damn it again! <laughs> and there she is putting the ball. That I'm not, not, not going for the ball. I'm like, I'll watch the <laughs> show. Furball. I'll watch someone else do it, <laughs> and I see the reaction. But I'm not doing it. <laughs> Snoopy can kick it. Um, but yeah, so whatever for what it was. Yeah, but ultimately, if this show hadn't existed, I don't think we would have missed anything at the end of the day. Yeah, I, I mean, hope, you're, right. you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's just like, it, it, it's it, it was fun to watch the moments that were yes, fun. Sure. And it was it was disappointing to watch everything else. Right, exactly. And this isn't this isn't Mando, obviously. Yeah. But that's the one yeah. we're, we're going to compare it to. That's really the only good show they have as far as Star Wars goes. Listen, when, when, when your one good show is a great show, like a solid 8.5 no, every episode at least, sure. then you... 
then yeah, you're you're going to be compared to it all the time. Of course, yeah, because that's that's what it is, right? And you know, and this was a known. I mean, well, Boba Fett's a known quantity too, but Obi Wan's more of a known quantity, more popular character, more beloved absolutely. character, and uh, they should have come. And, I mean, Vader's let's, let's, in there, like kicking. It should have been a great let's, show, right? Let's be honest. Tamara Morrison is like a fifty-year-old dude who's a little bit out of shape. He's got a whole like dad bod going on. Yeah, uh, Obi Wan, Hugh McGregor, that dude's so good. spry. He yeah. He still looks like he's in yeah. his like thirties. I don't know how like, old he is, but he looks he looks good. I mean, I, I that's what I'm saying. Like he's got I'm it all put curious. together. I'm gonna look so, it up to see because I'm kind of curious. I'm, I'm thinking thinking he's fifty right now. He's probably like late forties, I think. Maybe fifty. I don't know. I don't think he's fifty. Maybe he is. He's 51. Okay, well, there you go. 51. Uh, there but, you go. But he looks like he's in shape, right? He's lean. Okay, well, yeah. you know, fine, fair yeah. enough. But So there it is. So no more Obi-Wan. Hey, listen. Put in the listen, past. Listen, Over. all you got to say is this. At the end of this series, you get a Qui-Gon, you get an Emperor Palpatine, and you get a hello there. I mean, all the things are done. Yeah, the, all the, the things the, are done. Just sprinkled enough Easter eggs to kind of uh, uh, appease the masses. If you Absolutely, um, uh, I, I I was happy to see uh, to, to, to to see Qui Gon. Well, it that was me, cool. I mean, we knew that was it put a smile yeah, on. I was like, yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Yeah, this is good. Yeah. yeah. For ten years, you couldn't talk to him. Go figure. Exactly. Um, <laughs> whatever. Uh, but either way, let, let's move on to something. Let's let's cleanse the palate. Sure. If you will, let's talk a little Miss Marvel. Episode oh, man. three, right? Show that we've been high on since the beginning. And it's funny, I read something, which is unfortunate, but this was actually the lowest viewed show that Marvel's had by, Dude, by far. I, by far. I don't know if it's because people are just watching Obi-Wan over this or whatever the case is. Because I know Obi-Wan's numbers have apparently been fantastic. Well, right, which, which we knew. I mean, which I had. Makes no sense on the quality of the no, show. No, not quality, but not surprising. I mean, we knew it was going to open big. I mean, I, I don't know how about the subsequent shows did. I'm sure they did well because it's still Star Wars and it's Obi-Wan. So I get that. Look. But all I'm gonna say is this: If you're not watching Miss Marvel, and you live in New Jersey, punch <laughs> yourself in the face. Well, that, because fair enough. episode three is a love letter to New Jersey in so many ways. Yeah, I agree. So yeah. many ways. <laughs> I'll give you that. And you're right. Maybe the only ones watching. It. But yeah, it's. I, mean, I guess I'm not surprised that no one's watching the show. And I said no one. That's an exaggeration. But I mean, listen, it, it, marketing wasn't great. Let's be honest. No one knows the character. I mean, granted, no one you Moon well, Knight, I mean, Moon Knight yeah, wasn't on either. This. But I, I've seen, I've seen more like uh, late night talk shows, for example. Mm-hmm. The girl who does Miss Marvel, she's appeared on like The Daily Show, and I think she appeared <laughs> on on like The Tonight Show. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you know, she, she, they're they're doing the well, round. Well, no, not, 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 not saying that enough, Mark, and just uh, like the traders themselves weren't great. For me anyway. Like I, I, no, I, I will say that. You're right. The trailers are not did not portray how fun and exactly. energetic and, that, and that's is. what I'm saying. And, and it seemed that, more right. like yeah, a, right about that. It seemed like a Disney show, like a Nickelodeon show is what it, it kind of made it a seem. A little like, bit, right? yeah. And like that's not gonna, that's very, not gonna appease the older guys, all the older older uh the twenties and thirties. I don't wanna see that. Let's be real. We don't they don't the I, very I first the very first trailer they did where they had uh the weekend shine uh uh shine the light or whatever the song right, is. Yeah. Uh that was what every trailer should have been or better and it wasn't right. it was like it was that and then it was like a bunch of like shorter and so it th- the thing is this series has so much charm and likability mm-hmm. that if you don't let people know that's what you're getting it you're it, it, it's it, a disservice it, to the show it's yeah. a disservice it's because it's such a maybe the numbers may increase that people may you know word of mouth and all that maybe obviously they've only released the first i think First two viewerships, and again, it was I think it was like half of one division. Um, Dude, like that, that's a huge like, discrepancy. We, we are we are Hispanic men in our forties. I have children. This show is charming to no extent. Yeah. Like I, as a as a as a as a minority, I can understand the subcultures within your culture yeah. and all that whole breakdown, the tradition that you find stupid. Like, why are we doing this? But you do it anyway because that's what you grew that's up what it with. Is. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. And and then the parts of your life that are, are completely American because you live in America, like all that is so relatable. And I am not this girl's demographic at all, but I got it. Like yeah. to me, well, growing up, like, we had, I mean, not those exact issues, but we had similar issues with very similar. You know, I, I, the parents, I, I, the disconnect I, I, with the parents and disconnect with the parents and these traditions and all that happens. When you, and we've gone back about this where, you know, some things where I can overlook because my kids like it. I swear to God, I just had this conversation with my daughter before we recorded today, where she's like, uh, no, it was not this week, it was last week. She's like, Dad, don't take this the wrong way. And I was like, okay, lay it on me. 
how are you going to break my heart? What is happening? She's like, don't take this the wrong way. But if we're going to watch TV together, I would rather watch a Marvel series than a Star Wars series because those Star Wars series, I know where those characters end up, but I don't know what's going to happen to Miss Marvel. And I was like, uh, wow, if you have uh, just... Well, you see what happens when you do prequels? That's exactly what I'm telling you. And that is... Uh-huh. Nobody wins, and she's, right? Nobody wins. She's 13, and yeah, she's like, yeah, I, I, I've that's decided. That's what I'm saying. We know what's going to happen with these guys, and that, it can still be enjoyable, but we know where the journey is ending. Here, you're right. We don't, and, we don't know what's going on here, so the stakes are... And let me tell you this. As a comic book fan, there was stuff talked about in this episode that got me giddy because I know some of this that it's there's such deep cuts it was like oh i bet you nobody knows about this like uh when 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 uh, kamala is 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 taken uh, to the house of uh kamran and his mom and all the people that mm-hmm. live in their house she says you know we go by many names we're from the nor universe oh. we've been known as the clandestine the clandestine is a such a deep cut from the 90s i put it this way I know about clandestine. I've never read a clandestine book because no part of me went, ooh, clandestines, because nobody gave a crap about it. Alan Davis, which is a phenomenal pencil writer, he's done so much great work with like with the Fantastic Four and the X-Men, like seminal, like amazing. You cannot have, uh, the reason why he's become, so, uh, some of these properties become so famous is because of his influence on those books and what he's drawn and that kind of stuff. He came up with this whole idea about these clandestine people, which is supposed to be like, another Inhumans, another type of X-Men kind of situation. It involves Jin because the guy marries a Jin and their offspring are the clandestines. But it, it, it is such a deep cut that it's, a, it's, it's really smart because what you do is you can take that deep cut and you can do whatever the fuck you want with it because there is no fan base that goes, that's not right. They just do whatever it is. And they're like, now we're going to remake it up. So the clandestines are Jin. I'm like, yeah, technically, because the clandestine's mom is a Jin technically so i understand but they, they i i got really excited because like now i'm like oh dude you're throwing stuff in there that i did not expect because i'm thinking miss marvel kree and humans that's what i'm thinking you see kree because you see the blue harm oh, you know you said okay. that, that. Right, right, yeah. so that's kree because if you saw uh captain marvel kree blue sure. skins so like oh kree something in humans but then they got a whole thing and if you notice when they found the blue arm in that in that broken cavern did you notice what was on the floor no Wait, it was the pattern of the ten rings in stone. Oh really? Oh, totally. Oh, I didn't totally missed that. Interesting. Pattern in ten rings. So I was like, okay, so now you're connected to Shang Chi. You're bringing the clandestines, and you're doing Kree. Like, I don't know what the hell's going on, <laughs> but that is even more exciting because it's I cool, don't. Because at some point, she's going to be inserted into this this universe, right? In terms of the oh, the, yeah. well, she's going to be in, in Captain Marvel, right? Yeah, Miss Marvel. Miss Marvel. Oh, the Marvels. The Marvels. The Marvels, right? Marvels, right. So yeah, that and, makes sense. And and, and and once again. Talking about repping Jersey. Now you uh, do the whole reference last episode of like it wasn't for slippery when wet. Me and oh your father never would have met. Brown the action sequence it is Hold on. with Bon Jovi. Well, the band, the the band I was playing the wedding, Brown Jovi. Oh yeah, genius. <laughs> That was amazing. Like, oh my God, I love that. I was dying. I was like, oh my and God. I love it because we also knew Bar Mitzvah. Right, yeah, and, and that was cool. But yes, the, <laughs> they had the the advertising that the guy the the song sure. the song then, that came was it um. Uh, living living a prayer. prayer, right? Which was uh, like, an odd oh choice, God. but it kind of worked. Uh, it, yeah. it worked so it well. Yeah. Like I, I was watching this, and I was like, "This show just went better." <laughs> like it, it was already good. It went better. And, here, and I'll tell you how great that scene was. I hate Bon Jovi. I hate oh. Bon Jovi with a passion. Blasphemy. And I was like, that was a great pull. There's only one good Bon Jovi song, and that's "Dead or Alive." Everything else do, is hot that's, garbage. That's, that's one of my favorite songs. Yeah, living that prayer that's, only because when I used to go out and the clubs and stuff, that song comes on, all the white girls go nuts. So it's just it, oh, it's, absolutely. That guy, know, it's, I, it is I what get it is. It. It's like an anthem. Yeah. It is, it's, it's, I, it's, don't, I, like I don't like I it. It's an credit, anthem song. Let's give credit. credit to I will give credit to yeah. Dead or Alive. Sure. But yeah, everything like else is hot garbage. <laughs> but I will say, living on a living on a prayer to the action sequence. Ah, no, oh, I mean, it was so much fun. That's good, right? As I say, it's. It's very well done. It's really well done. People need yeah. to start watching. I hope people start watching this show. Maybe word of mouth spreads and, and the ratings might go up. I'll, I'll look into that down the road. And, and you know what I liked about it too is that she was she was fighting them <coughs> without fighting them. Right. She yeah. was like, because she's not a fighter. Well, she's, she's not she's, a fighter. Yeah, she just avoided That's him. what I'm saying. Right. So I, I yeah. really appreciated the fight without fighting. I, I mean, if she was started fighting, I would have a huge problem with that episode. Terrorizing. Yeah, I exactly. Like, oh, okay, I, no. Uh, but they didn't... I, 
she was brave to survive. She yes. threw a few things at them, but she was not like housing them. It wasn't like a like 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 it's a like protect, a Black yeah, Widow protect, or a Captain yeah, America or a Black Panther. Yeah, I would have seen that. Nothing like that. I would have had a huge problem with this episode. I just, so would I. Thank so God I that really. They showed the restraints. Like, listen, she she's just like she's sixteen. She, and that's and that's that's how you know you, when you, when you have a clear idea, yeah. idea of what the show is when you show restraint because like that's not what we need right now. And I will say this: this that, this is not kind of related. This really gets me excited about Batgirl. Right, because yeah. with the two guys, the two directors who did the last Bad Boys, which I actually liked, I never thought I'd say those words. Um, you know, they did this; they they, they started the show. So, okay, taking those kind of sensibilities of this show and translating the Bad Girl could really work well. So I'm, it I, could. I'm like, okay, it could. I, I like and here's good the thing, choice, right? As far this, as the and the sensibility I like is, and, and I hope that's what they carried at Bad Girl is youthful energy. Yes, charm. Mm -hmm. Everyone like exactly. the Bad Girl's got to be charming. I was all hell, yep. and a kinetic energy to it yeah. whether it's like just her being her or in the fight moment or whatever the case is and knowing restraint when you have it like she's not batman exactly. she is barbara gordon yeah. so there are going to be differences in fighting styles and approach and you show the restraint to show what the character is those tenants if that's what if that's what they bring to every project, I am a fan. No, uh, that's what I'm saying. It. Yeah. And so again, now I'm really interested in seeing what they do. Let's see if they can hit with that as well, because they did a really good job here. And this is it is what it is. And this is a show I was not looking forward to. They didn't have high hopes for. I'm like, whatever, fine, I, I'll watch it. But, but very enjoyable. It is what it is, right? I mean, it is. It's a, it's super likable. Really pound for pound, yeah, man. I can't wait to see, hopefully three episodes left and they continue the momentum. So I, I, I really, like I said, the last episode is. All, I'm always going to be hesitant because we've seen it before. I'm hoping. Absolutely. Like, let's, like we, can they stick like the landing? Right? You're, 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 you're gonna super superhero fight it at the end. Ah oh, man, it's, it's just it is it is what's it gonna be, I'm and sure I guess that some, that's gonna. Be but occur, my right? because of what they've done, the way they're gonna superhero fight it, it's gonna. I feel like it's gonna be really interesting. Right, I hope so, and that's what I'm looking forward to. So I'm hoping right. they do. But right now, it's 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 flying high, no doubt about it. Um, good for them. Yeah. Another one, right? Um, last show that came out, we each saw one episode. It dropped yes. yesterday. We, we got lives. We we're busy on. I got to see one. It is what it is. But Umbrella Academy season three. I'm a big fan. I know you're a big fan. Uh, Super big fan. fan. Been, I love the first um, two seasons. So good. Umbrella Academy is right up there with Doom Patrol of like cool, weird, interesting, fun yeah, show. And I think the, and and it makes that weird more accessible than Doom Patrol does. But Doom Patrol. Oh yeah. It leans on it so heavily. It's not for everybody. We talked about that. I love the show, but it's not for everybody. This is more accessible to the masses, right? And it still it leans on that weirdness and kookiness, the vibe it has. I love the characters. Klaus, like Doom Klaus, Patrol yeah. is like feels like straight indie, yes. and and Umbrella Academy feels like the commercialized version of indie, but In with indie way. people involved. Right. So you're yeah, getting exactly. that indie sensibility, yeah. but it's commercial. Yeah, yeah the characters absolutely. are great. Klaus is like my one of my top three characters on TV right now. Dude. I love the Klaus. He's Awesome. I mean, he's, he's so funny. Um, but everybody's good, right? We bring Zay games. So, yeah, so episode three, man. Uh, episode three. Season three, kicking off. Thoughts on episode the first episode, one. man? What, what, what do you think so far? What, uh, what you I mean, listen, uh, I, I've told people time and time again, you should watch The Umbrella Academy, if for nothing else, that one episode where everyone sings and dances. And oh, episode one that, yeah. of season three opens oh. up. With a beautiful song and dance number. Kenny Loggins, that, man. The king of film dude, uh, soundtracks. Dude, it is. I, like, I, I'm on. watching it. I'm like, where are they going to go with this? And then I was like, oh, clever. I like that. Good. That's fun. That was fun. So, yeah, that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. But like the whole thing about the Umbrella Academy, meeting the Sparrow Academy and seeing their, their world and what's going on. Like, it was fun. I will say this episode, because they were so bold and trying to be so big, you got to see the budgetary constraints oh, you got absolutely. to see yes and, and i heard that continues i mean it's not a, it's a negative not a huge negative but right. but i hear that continue. i mean let's be honest this show has never been about the act which is cool right almost like it's all about the, it's about the characters absolutely. right it's, it's about it's, characters it's not a team and up. the weird yeah, it's not a team up characters in the weird that's always right. what it's I mean, been so often, i get yeah, it you get, a, you get a scene like you know at the end of last season a couple here and there some action sequences right. but it's more with the characters the emotions what they go through that's what the so I'm okay with that, right? This was but like, this was saying, more like, like the boys or a Marvel show being like, okay, guys, 
Right. And but uh, this is what you I do appreciate see. about it is because they went so bold mm-hmm. with this uh, with that with that first episode that you see where the seams of the special effects are like, oh, they got to hold it. Oh in. yeah, it's a little you, the green screen is everywhat. It, yeah, it's, it's yeah, a nitpick. But you know what? It, but it's it, there. It's it's never fair. once it's fair. Never once did it did it turn me off to the to the episode. Mm-hmm. I literally I I felt like a parent like when I watch my kids struggle to accomplish something, like, oh, they did it! Look at that! They are uh, it was unbelievable, but they did. Are right, you good for you? Like I thought, I fell about. It. Like I was a very, I was very proud of what they did with, with 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 what they had, and the fact that it picks up right where the last episode of season two oh, yeah, left off. Right yeah, you have to like, and, see a recap because I mean it's been a while. I've forgotten. Like and they, they, they that, that that quick sort of like montage smash cut of what all the sparrows do in their in their life. That was cool. I thought that was really oh, cool. cool. They're and pretty badass, by the way. But yeah. They yeah. they they even have superhero costumes, like legit yeah. I mean, they're, superhero they're, costumes. It's obviously, they're far superior than the Umbrella oh, Academy. Oh man, they are, like, like they beat their shit yeah, it wasn't, out of the Umbrella even, Academy. It wasn't even close. And, <laughs> it was bad. And, uh, and and oddly enough, the one person who gives all of Sparrow Academy the biggest run for the money is Anya. Of course. So, well, obviously, uh, right, right. So because she's a powerhouse, and I totally right. get it. I did love the fact that they explained why there's a Sparrow Academy and not an Umbrella Academy, oh, right. which to me yeah. is the perfect reason. It, like, it is a perfect Umbrella perfect. Academy reasoning. And guys, spoiler alerts, but if you saw in season two, uh, the Umbrella Academy got sent back in time and they basically got in a really screwed up, hyper convoluted, but super important and dangerous having to try to stop the JFK assassination, or at least to make sure it went off the right way. That's the best way I could put it. And they had to bring their dad into it because that was the only way they could figure things out. And th- when they go back to their regular timeline, now there's the Sparrow Academy, not the Umbrella Academy. And it's eventually revealed that his da- their dad purposely picked other kids <laughs> because he was disappointed at how bad of a job he did. That was pretty good. With that first- I'm like that is that's pretty the good. perfect like yeah. all of it makes sense I, I, yeah you're right i was like okay i like that and i did a lot of good stuff like that i love this scene with banya when she's talking to the the spiral number one and oh yeah that in the was diner cool, that right? was... and the diner that uh, that was bad i'm like okay this is what i'm gonna i'm gonna spoil well i don't want to spoil it but this is what i'm gonna do i'm gonna you know, having, like, i guess they're trying to negotiate something she's like listen if you don't do they're not trying to negotiate well, it, it is a straight up it is a well, straight it's up it's kind of a compromise right listen leave us alone we'll leave you alone kind of deal or if not, in a sense this because, but, I, but but why would you why would you listen to someone uh, compromising if you had the goods in them and anya this is a beautiful line that anya says oh. she says your team is good maybe even better than my guys but me i can beat you and i was like oh yeah, like, that I, I, is I, I destroyed the world twice or whatever you know yeah right? yeah i was like oh that was, my God, it was, that it was is... a bad i was like man that's badass that, that was really cool. that is great yeah, that was, that really was great. Great. i really such a good yeah. exchange a, yeah. a great and a great character moment mm-hmm. for where anya was starting season one yes to, to get to that yeah. that's what, what I'm a saying. great event. it's it, it's earned. all of it earned it's earned all exactly earned. Through, through all the last couple of seasons she's this is where she's at now that's what i'm saying right because she is yeah. clearly the most powerful one there's, there's no debate and now she's there, confident yeah, in herself she to knows do it, it. Yeah. she can control it and again a warning this is what i can do Let's have this discussion. Great scene. But look, it's off to a good start, obviously. You know, I hope the rest is, I've heard good things about it. I'm sure the rest is going to be fine. I, I pretty great. I can't wait to finish the season. And 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 not for nothing, like, but the showrunner, the executive producer showrunner for for uh for uh Umbrella Academy, also one executive producer and showrunners for Moon Knight. So oh, yeah. all the oh, weird right, yeah. stuff about Moon Knight that yeah. you liked, yeah. it's this, but like unchained. There is no Marvel constraint. He, oh, no, they yeah, get to the, the, yeah, this is this is a sandbox he loved to play, and he's like absolutely, he's, absolutely. The, the so if this, it's just it's like it's just the characters so good. I mean, I love these characters. They can just sit there. If and there's talk any and, part of you that thought I love the weird parts of Moon Knight, I wish there was more. Umbrella Academy. Oh, the Umbrella That's Academy. your exactly. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's, I think it's one of those. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. Where it's not. You're right. Not, it's not. We're not. It's not Doom Control, right? Right. It kind of sits right in the middle. And that's something else makes the show so good. We has like it has like you know typical comic book hero tropes which we like and enjoy. But throws in that zany kind of weird offbeat kind of stuff that we it works, man. This show works, and I can't wait to finish this. Off. We'll talk about this obviously next week. Is yeah, absolutely, you know, absolutely. I think it's ten episodes more or less. Um, and I think they're all like you know again, it's weird to see a show that's more than thirty minutes long. Um, yeah, I'm talking to you, Disney. Uh, he's a 40, 45, <laughs> 50 minutes long. You know, before we get to the, the eight minute credit scene. 
<sighs> Unbelievable. But either way, but yeah, it's very good. Off to a great start. I mean, this is a show everyone should be watching if you're not. I mean, if you're a nerdy, I'm sure you're watching this show. I mean, Absolutely. Obviously way Absolutely. Not. But that being said, Dems and Nuggets. Guys, that was our Weekend Geek. Thank you so much for tuning in. We appreciate it all so much. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, all that kind of stuff helps us out. We got more stuff we want to do, but the more likes and subscribes we start getting, the more chance that we have to be doing that. So please don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow us on the social medias at Nerdsplaining uh, 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 Pod on Instagram, Nerdsplaining underscore on Twitter. Don't forget to check out all the original audio episodes at EricDeSilva.com, E R I C D A S I L V A. All the original audio episodes are right there in the landing page. And while you're there, don't forget to pick up my album, Adorably Offensive, available on all the audio place where you can get your music written on stuff like that always very appreciative as well and don't forget guys uh if you have any questions let us know let's know what you like about the show what you didn't like about the show what we should be talking about and while you're here don't forget to if you're here you're also checking us on youtube check out the latin nerd network we have shows like nerd splitting and the watch list and thanos's choice where it's a battle royale for the final ip that can outlast the world check out all those shows and more shows we have coming up as we come out of the next 20 months i promise you we're working i know people are going to start to be around like what is the new show i want to see it we're working on it. I promise you, we got so much more stuff. We're just trying to iron things out. But yes, our things are coming out. Guys, but as always, thank you for tuning into the show. My name's been Eric De Silva. This has been Jose Romero. We have been Nerd Splaining. And if you don't know, now you know. Boom. <laughs> <laughs>